Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Hewlings, and welcome back to Bodybuilding.com's Foundations of Fitness Nutrition course. Over the next few videos, we're going to dive in to what you need to know about the major macronutrients of protein, carbohydrates, and fat. But since you just watched a video outlining the mindset that food is fuel, first, we're going to discuss the way most of us currently measure food as fuel, the calorie. To be clear, the calorie is definitely not the only way that people measure the energy value of food. In fact, it's not even the official way of measuring energy according to the International System of Units. The joule and kilojoule are used just as extensively around the world. And even that 550 calories that a restaurant says is in your favorite double stack burger are actually something different, kilocalories. If you find that confusing, don't worry. Everything we're gonna say about calories here applies equally to those other units of measurement. So let's try to provide a little clarity and try to help you make the most of the information that's on a food label. Technically, a calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by a single degree. Traditionally, researchers would actually measure this by putting a portion of food in a large cylinder called a bomb calorimeter and burning it to see how much energy or potential heat it contained. While calorimeters still exist, they're not usually how calorie numbers, like those on a food label, are calculated these days. More often, they're assembled based on known caloric numbers of the ingredients in the food. Kind of like the way you can type all the ingredients in a salad individually into a fitness app and get a total number of the calories and macronutrients. Most of these apps pull from the same large database created by the United States Department of Agriculture. Plenty of people use these numbers to guide their everyday nutrition decisions. There are also a number of popular systems that use calories as the basis of their calculations or point systems. So what are the advantages of a calorie-focused system? Well, for one, it gives you an objective way to compare very different meals and make informed decisions about overall portion sizes. These can be some of the most difficult nutrition decisions to make because culturally, our ideas about what is an adequate portion have been hugely distorted over the last few decades. A calorie number can also help you see how what seems like a small indulgence can really add up. For example, a can of soda a day may not seem like much, especially if everyone around you is drinking out of far bigger cups. But it's still 150 extra calories a day and 150 calories of pure sugar at that. Consumed regularly, that's enough to make a difference in how you look and feel maybe up to 15 pounds of weight gain in a year. That number can help bring into focus what isn't optimum nutrition. Soda is only one of the big sources of calories. Beer, wine, cocktails, coffee drinks, they can all add plenty of extra calories to a diet and you may not even be aware of it because they don't all have labels. So just because there's no label doesn't mean it's calorically free. However, a calorie-focused approach also has plenty of limitations, and one of them is the accuracy, which has been questioned for decades. So are calorie counts accurate enough that they can be, well, counted upon? A number of studies have shown that when it comes to packaged processed foods in particular, there can be a lot of variability. It's very normal for labels to underreport carbohydrates, sometimes as much as 25 or even up to 95% and the total calories can be just as far off. All of a sudden, that nice clean calculation just got a little messier. And even if the number on that label is accurate, research has shown it doesn't reflect the number of calories you actually absorb through the complicated, highly personal process of human digestion. When it comes to foods that your body has to work hard to digest, like nuts and meat, the difference in what you eat and what you absorb could be another 25% or more in inaccuracy. One more problem with calories, as soon as people start counting them, they often start cutting them and often too low. And without taking enough care where they're cutting them from, the race to the bottom that often goes with fat loss plans can leave you undernourished, feeling awful, and even do long-term damage to your metabolism. This can make it harder to maintain a healthy body composition down the road. 
among plenty of other unpleasant side effects. And it certainly doesn't bring you any closer to that optimal nutrition we talked about in the first video. So are calories useless? No, it means they're just one part of the equation. Let's establish a few guidelines on how to make them work for you. Take them with a big grain of salt. Not literally, but most of the big caloric miscounts happened with processed food. If you build your diet around whole foods, things like unprocessed meat, vegetables, fruits, grains, nuts, you'll help level the playing field. Don't just exercise to burn calories. We'll talk more about this later, but you actually burn a lot fewer calories during exercise than you think, no matter how intense your workouts may be. And in turn, your body burns more calories just maintaining itself and in non-exercise activity than most people realize. The upshot for you? Don't sweat over how many calories you're sweating out in the gym. Do cardio for its other benefits, like heart health and conditioning, strength training to increase your lean body mass, and you'll reap far greater rewards. Think portions more than numbers. Again, we'll talk more about this later, but there are other equally predictable ways to measure portions and to train your body to tap into its natural fullness signals. How you prioritize veggies, protein, and fats when you're filling your plate can help you control calories while also leaving you feeling full and satisfied and getting maximum nutrients. So can the way you eat, fast or slow, out of a pan or on the plate, on the fly or with a plan. But the bottom line is still, portions do matter. Don't disregard everything on the food label. Parts of the label still have value. The ingredient list, for example. The fewer the ingredients, the better. It gives fewer places for calories to hide. Quality matters as much as quantity. Yes, calories do matter, but they're only part of the equation that adds up to optimal nutrition. Other things to consider are, is the food gonna send your blood sugar through the roof, leaving you hungry and cloudy headed all afternoon? Is it gonna help you recover from exercise, keep you full, or bring you closer to your health and physique goals? One simple number, like a calorie, simply isn't enough to capture all that. If counting calories is a deep-seated habit for you, you don't have to stop, but consider it just one measurement of many, not the be-all, end-all. In this regard, it's kind of like the number on a scale. It may move up or down or stay the same, but it doesn't tell you anything about how you might be changing in the mirror, how you feel, or how much stronger you might be getting. The quality and nutrient makeup of your food matters more than you might think. You can't go wrong by putting your attention there first.